Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we have two cars that are going to crash into each other and we're going to do a couple of impulse and force calculations from that. So in this question we have a 1000 kilogram car moving at 4 meters per second to the right and it collides with a stationary 800 kilogram car. So I'm just going to quickly highlight the 1000, the 4, that's for the 1 car and then a stationary 800 kilogram car causing that car to move off with a velocity of 1 meter per second. The collision lasts for 0 0.4 seconds. Question A. Determine the velocity of the 1000 kilogram car after the collision. So whenever you have two cars colliding and you need to know the velocities of one of them after the collision, well that's going to be this formula. Remember when we said that in any kind of collision, the total momentum of the system remains constant. We then choose a direction. We then open up our brackets. I trust that you guys remember this. Sorry, I always run out of space there. And so this is going to be, I'm just going to put here, a, let's call the 1000 kilogram car, we'll call that one A, and the stationary car, we'll call that B. So this is going to be for, then I'm going to put initial, initial, final, final, MA, then velocity of A, mass of b, velocity of b, and then you just repeat that. And then you just fill everything in. So the mass of a is a thousand. Its initial velocity is four meters per second to the right, so that's positive. The mass of the second car is 800, and it was initially stationary. Then the mass of the second car will obviously still be a thousand, but we don't know what its velocity is. Plus the mass of the second car is 800, and they tell us that its velocity is one. Now people sometimes say, but Kevin, how do we know in which direction? Well guys, that part's obvious, because think about it, you've got, you've got a car parked over here, let's call that car B, it gets hit from the left hand side, how do I know it's from the left? Because they tell us that car A was initially moving right. So obviously if it collides with this car, it's going to cause car B to move to the right. We don't know what's going to happen to car A, but the maths will sort that part out for us. So we can just call it velocity. Then over here we can say that that velocity is 1. Now it's just a case of solving. So we've got 4000 on the left, 1000 V plus 800. That's going to give us 3200 equals to 1000 V. And so velocity will be 3.2 meters per second. And because it's a positive answer and we chose right as positive, that will be Right. Okay, so that's going to be the, the velocity of the original car that was moving at 4. It hit something, and so obviously it will slow down a little bit. The next one, determine the impulse. Now, guys, straight away, uh, on your formula sheet, you are going to have the following formula. F net is equal to change in P over change in time. Remember, we said that that's Newton's second law in terms of momentum. If you multiply this T onto the other side, then you end up with this over here and then this on the left is impulse but there's a few important things that I need to mention here and I have mentioned this in a previous video so this green block that's impulse so if you know the net force and you know the time you can calculate the impulse but if you don't know the time or the net force then you can calculate it in a different way because of this equal sign it means that these two expressions are the same so it's quite interesting we can calculate impulse by multiplying force with time, but we could also calculate impulse if we know the change in the momentum. Why? Because the change in the momentum is the same as the impulse. How do I know that? Because they are equal. Now in this question they have given us time, but we have nothing, well we don't know anything about F net. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the impulse just using the change in the momentum. Now remember that momentum is mass times velocity, but change in momentum is mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So let's, this is for the 800 kilogram car, okay, and we must always choose a direction as positive, and so it's an 800 kilogram car, its final velocity is 1, and its original velocity, can you remember, is 0, because it was stationary. And so this will give us 800. Now, Kevin, what are the units of impulse? Well, it's a bit of an interesting one. So impulse 
because these two are equivalent, you can use either units. So f is newtons and se and time is seconds. So you could say e n dot s like that. Notice there's no minus one because time is not at the bottom. Or you could even use momentum units, which is kilogram per meter per second negative one. And then the, the direction will be to the right because we chose right as positive and we got a positive answer. They now want us to determine the impulse on the 1000 kilogram car. So we're also going to use the same formula. Change in momentum is equal to MVF minus MV initial. Why are we using change in momentum? Because we just saw that impulse, which is this part here, is the same as the change in the momentum. And then always choose a direction as positive. And so the mass of that car was 1,000. Its final velocity was 3.2. And then its original velocity was 4. And we get an answer of negative 800. So then I'm going to say, therefore, the change in momentum is going to be 800 kilogram per meter per second to the minus 1. And that's going to be to the left. Now, how does this make sense? We'll have a look at this. So you've got one car, which is car A, which is originally traveling at four meters per second. It bumps into a car that is not moving. Now what is car B gonna cause car A to do? Speed up or slow down? Well slow down and that is why the impulse is to the left. The change in momentum is also to the left. Although the car will keep moving to the right, because it's slowed down a little bit, it means the change in the momentum is actually to the left. And we can also see Newton's third law indirectly, we can see that both values are 800. So we know that, so what we can say then is that when two objects collide, the impulse is the same. And it makes sense because remember impulse's formula is F net change in time. We know from Newton's third law that when two objects collide, the force that each one experiences will be the same. So that will be a constant. The amount of time that the collision lasts for both objects would also be the same. And so if you multiply these two together, well, th that value would be the same. So when two objects collide, the impulse on each one is the same. They'll just have opposite directions. Question D says, determine the net force acting on the 800 kg car. Well, we know that F net is equal to the change in the momentum. Or no, we can actually just use impulse is equal to F net times delta T. And we choose right as positive. Now we've worked out the impulse in question B for the 800 kilogram car, and that was 800. F net, we don't know, but we know that the collision lasts for 0 0.4 seconds. And so we can just fill that in. We then end up with F net is equal to 2000 newtons. And because my answer is positive, it means to the left, I mean to the right. So F net is 2000 newtons to the right. And that's for the 800 kilogram car. Then the net force acting on the 1000 kg car, well, we know that impulse is equal to F net times by time. Always choose a direction as positive. So we know that the, we chose right as positive, but the impulse in the 1000 kilogram car was 800 left. So I'm gonna say minus 800. See how important direction choice is. And then F net, we don't know but the time is also 0 0.4. And so we're also gonna end up with 2000, but it's gonna be minus 2000. So therefore that means F net is equal to 2000 Newtons to the left. Now that makes sense because remember, you've got a 1000 kilogram car that bumps into an 800 kilogram car. What does the 800 kilogram car cause the 1000 kilogram car do? to do to slow down and so that means there is a force acting on this 1000 kilogram car to the left it doesn't mean the car is going to move left but it's going to cause the car to slow down okay kevin so what you're telling me is that in a collision no matter how big or heavy one car is compared to the other everything just stays the same for them Aha, so up till now, yes, everything stays the same. The force exerted on both is the same and the impulse. So if you've got a massive train that hits a tiny little fly, the force exerted on both is the same. But then Kevin, why does the fly get terribly injured, pretty much dies, whereas the train doesn't even notice a thing? But you're telling me that the force exerted on both is the same. 
guys, the key word in all of that, and it's very interesting, acceleration. That is what causes harm to the body, is how, how much acceleration you undergo. So we know that F net, now this is from grade 11, equals to MA. So if we can work out the acceleration, or what we can say, let's say for example the, the train, if we work out its acceleration during the collision with the fly, it's going to be A equals to F net over M. Now we said that F net is going to be the same for both. So let's say F net for both is 5 newtons. Okay. So let's say for the train, well that's going to be, I'm going to call this acceleration of the train equals to F net, which is 5, over its mass. Now its mass is huge. Let's say it's like 100,000 kilograms. Now if you had to go type this on the calculator, it's a tiny number it's like 0 0.0004 and so that is what the train's acceleration will be when it hits the fly. Let's look at the acceleration of the fly. That's going to be 5 because we said the force acting on both is the same on the fly and the train but if you divide it by the fly's mass which is probably like 10 grams now if you get that into kilograms that's 0 0.01 and so if you go divide this you end up with 500 Sorry, this over here was meant to be a 5, I don't know why I put a 4, and then this over here is, yes, 500 meters per second to the minus 2. Now that acceleration, the body cannot handle that, and so the fly is instantly killed. So if you have a massive truck hitting into a small car, the force exerted on both is the same, it's the mass. The smaller mass undergoes the greater acceleration, and that is what causes the greatest damage.